So a guy says to me, um, Steve, I want to be an audio reviewer. What do you think? And I say, well, maybe. But before you become an audio reviewer, what you should really do is get a job selling audio. On so many levels, that makes way more sense. First of all, it's a lot easier to find a job selling audio than it is to find a job making any money at all reviewing gear. So there you go. Best advice is start by selling audio. And what happens down the road happens down the road. But anyway, if you if you sell audio, you'll learn a lot. You'll learn first. You'll have so much experience hearing, you know, different components and different speakers and different sources under wildly different circumstances. And you're soaking all that in if you're paying attention. That'll be a great resource once you start actually reviewing gear. But I think just as important or more important is that you will have the experience of demoing gear for hopefully many hundreds, thousands of people, and you'll see how people react to audio. That is fascinating to me. It still is fascinating to me. Because let's say, I mean, I, uh, Vandersteens. I sold a lot of Vandersteens, and I would usually use Adcom Electronics or something, and, and I had the experience of playing the same speakers with the same or similar electronics in the same room, and sometimes even with the same demo music. And people's reaction to the sound was could be very, very different. You know, one guy would hear the Vandersteens, these are two C's or two CE's, and they'd say, oh, they're so open and sweet. And then that guy would leave and a half hour later, somebody else would be sitting in the same chair, listening to the same music in the same room. And he would say, oh, I think they're kind of bright. I don't know. I mean, they had day to day, gigantically different reactions to the same stuff. And you'd learn there is no consensus in audio on how people hear or interact with gear and what their impressions are. and It's just wild to me. I mean, and then the other thing is people bring uh, certain expectations of what a thing is, you know, like that electrostatic speakers like the Martin Logans, that they had, they had like really great transparency and they'd say, oh yeah, oh, well, it's definitely very transparent. And somebody else would say, I don't know, I don't think it's all that transparent because they just hear it differently. I remember one time the jazz drummer Max Roach came in and I didn't get the impression he was an audiophile, but he was really curious about hearing Apogee ribbon speakers. Somebody was t you know, going on about Apogee ribbons, how good they are. And he brought in, uh, brought in some recordings that he knew really well. And I started playing these Apogees. I think they were duettas for him. He just sat there and he's like, basically, is that all there is to the circus? I mean, is that it? Like, they're okay, but... And that is, that was also fascinating of how musicians would hear and appreciate or not uh, a given high-end audio system. Like, some of them really, really got it, and some of them sat there and said, eh, no, doesn't do anything for me, you know? So even when... A guy usually uh, spends his life in music and hears high-end audio, which is, you know, a really nice system. It's not like they're going to react to it or say, wow, that's so incredible. Sometimes. Not usually, though. I, I didn't find that musicians to be that much, actually, to be direct about it, not terribly more perceptive about sound quality than the average person. I found that when musicians listen to music, they listen to how well it's being played, or they know that, oh, I like that guy, he's a cool uh, you know, trumpet player, he's really good. It'll be into that, which makes sense, but in terms of hearing its, its, its strengths and its weaknesses, eh, not, not particularly, you know? But, like I said, I think it, being exposed to the fact that people react differently to uh, a given set of speakers or amplifiers or cables or whatever, is it, it kind of imprints on you, right? You know that there isn't like a definitive, this is this. Not always, not even um, most of the time, most of the time for something, right? It's it, the interaction between a human being and a piece of audio a gear is, uh, it's hard to predict, really, really is. Um, and that's what makes it constantly fascinating as a salesman. And I use that 
background and experience of selling audio is always, in the back of my head at least, that when I'm writing about a piece of gear, I can't ever bring myself to say, this is, you know, this is going to light your fire. You're going to love this and be happy for the rest of your life. Because I, I don't know what you want out of a pair of speakers. I don't know what the reader of one of my CNET reviews wants out of a component. I don't know what their expectations are, what their room is like, you know, what their associated components are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's, it's hard to say. But the experience of talking to people about it, which I did for the years I was a salesman, where I would play a piece of equipment, hear what they had to say, and then adjust accordingly when I was going to play something to contrast with the first thing, or the second, or the third, or the fourth thing, right? Those, this, those choices made by me were based on what the person was saying they wanted. Now, sometimes <clears throat> that would lead to something they really, really liked, and they would buy it. But sometimes, as I went from A to B to C to D, uh, I wasn't really getting anywhere, anywhere because I couldn't understand what they wanted. They couldn't express what they wanted. So we sort of hit a, a dead end, and then uh, usually nothing would happen because their, their needs uh, weren't being met, which is the way it works, right? Um, my relationship with readers is, is way more uh, diffuse, right? Because sometimes I hear that you guys bought, buy something uh, that I reviewed and like it, and, and that's fantastic when that happens. Uh, and I assume sometimes <laughs> you buy it and you go, what? What was Guttenberg talking about? So I wish it could be more precise, but in fact, it's not. I think that concludes this exciting chapter of the Audiophiliac Daily Show, and it does come up daily. If you like it, please come back often, and I'll see you here real soon.